But our next guest has got a buy. It's got a price target that suggests some significant upside from here. For some perspective, let's bring in Tom Narayan, who is the lead global autos equity analyst at RBC, and he joins me now. Tom, before I get into your uh, view on where the stock could go, let's talk about the delivery numbers because they were very weak. Were you surprised by the magnitude of the weakness? Yes, I was surprised. <laughs> Uh, my expectation was something like a 440 level, and it came out at 387, 20% down quarter over quarter. So make no mistake, this was definitely a negative surprise for everybody. I know there were some folks, some investors, who were thinking it could be 400 to 420. So there's some folks were really negative into the print, but this even came in below their expectations. There were a lot of things that happened that caused this to happen. Some perfect storm, one tiny items. Uh, but yeah, definitely there's some concerns about the fundamentals of um, not only for them, their business, but also for EVs in general. Well, let's talk about it. What is one time? What's yeah. concerning to you for the longer term? Sure. So there are some one timer things. The Red Sea uh, crisis uh, mm -hmm. took shut down um, plants for about two weeks in Europe. Um, you also had that arson at Berlin Gigafactory. There were some updates they did to the Model 3. Um, there was also some pull forward of demand that went into Q4 last year that was really strong uh, because the IRA credit expired for the Model 3 standard. So some one-timey things like that happened that probably if they weren't there, it, it would have been a lot better. Um, but yeah, I mean, even so, there's no doubt we saw what happened with BYD in China. Uh, we don't have the geographic breakouts just yet for Tesla, but we suspect that the China number was probably soft. So there is some underlying uh, demand weakness there. We also know the market in the U.S., the EVs were flat in um, Q, uh, Q423 versus uh, Q323, you know, which suggests a slowing of EVs. That has to have played a role here. You know, the Model 3, Model Y are somewhat saturated, um, cars now. The next big model isn't coming until 2025. So I do think that's probably why there's some negativity uh, going on uh, on today's result. And yet you're a bull. I think <laughs> you outperform rating almost $300 price target suggests some significant upside from here. Where's the optimism coming from? Yeah, I, I definitely still am bullish on this stock. Uh, we did some uh, deep dive work using our data science team to look at the number one concern that buyers have for EVs, which is charging infrastructure. And our data actually shows that charging infrastructure in the US is actually fine. Um, it's just that pricing needs to come down, model availability needs to improve. So we think this EV slowdown is just a temporary thing. It will improve. And once Tesla gets that, affordable uh, EV out the door. I We do think that folks will get more excited. It can make it cheaper than any other uh, car company or EV maker and be profitable making those. And then it has an energy storage business nobody's talking about. We actually visited that facility a few weeks mm. ago. We think it could be worth more than their car business. And then of course there's autonomy. They just gave a free trial of their FSD uh, level two plus product that people are raving about. That could actually reignite demand for the cars in Q2. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really because of autonomy, energy storage, which are much higher multiple businesses. It's not going to happen immediately overnight. They're multi-decade type plays. But we do think that when you look at this stock, you have to look at it on a decades perspective, not just on a months to maybe years perspective. Well, let's bring in the focus a little bit more near term. It used to be almost a, a pretty solid correlation. Higher oil prices meant higher Tesla share price because everybody's looking at how much it costs to pump gas. Um, and so then electrification, electric vehicles seem more attractive. That doesn't seem to be filtering into the story as much this time around. Yeah, I mean, there is an EV slowdown that's happened. A lot of it is just timing, you know, not everything moves in a straight line. During the pandemic, you know, we had a lot of stimulus that came in, not only in the U.S., but in Europe, tied to EVs. There was kind of a pull forward of demand. Also, remember, interest rates were super low. Everyone was cash rich. I think a lot of the EVs, the first movers, everybody bought these things. 
And now we're faced with like the mainstream buyer of EVs and they're like not sure how to use them. They're worried about range anxiety, which is more psychological as we've as, as we've noted. So it's just a lull period, I think. Uh, and eventually you also need more models. Right now, the only models in the U.S. you have that are EVs are crossovers and sedans. Most of the demands are, are demand in the U.S. are are larger SUVs and pickup trucks. We'll get there. It's just it's just going to take a, a little more time. Also, pricing is just too high right now. Interest rates are really high, so the financing is really high. So pricing on these EVs needs to come down, and it will. More model availability needs to happen, um, and consumers need to just be educated on how to charge their EVs. Um, once once they realize you don't need to charge the whole thing up, you know, uh, and you can use your home charging, you don't need the public <laughs> infrastructure. Um, I think then you'll start seeing pickup rates for for EVs start picking back up again. We're just in this kind of period between two growth phases. And and I guess it sounds like you see the growth is there long term. Near term, that story is challenged. So, you know, if you're somebody who's hearing, oh, he's got a price target of three hundred dollars. Maybe that doesn't happen, right, in in the near term, because it's, it's this company still trades on growth, and we're unlikely to see that in a meaningful way this year. That's a good point. Um, you could see things get worse before they get better. That's usually the case with the <laughs> with Tesla stock. Um, but you know, the way I look at this is, I, I don't know about you, I think timing the moves of Tesla is is next to impossible. Um, and so, you know, anything could cause the stock to, re I mean, look at this print number, 387 expectations were 430. The stock's only down 5%. Yeah. Right. So clearly expectations were, I mean, if this was when it's a trillion dollar market cap, the stock would be down way more, right? So clearly expectations are very low already. So what if the Q2 number is better than what folks expect? What if this FSD gets people excited and buy Teslas more than what people, it's a really an expectations game. So what if someone like me writes a big piece on FSD or energy storage and the narrative changes? So, you know, could this last longer, this pain? Sure. Could something cause the stock to bottom out and start moving upwards again? That could happen soon as well. It's just, Difficult to time in. I'm just looking at this more of a long-term yeah. horizon, and I see more positives than negatives. Before I let you go, I want to get your two cents on Magna. I saw Magna show up on a list. It was another shop, but they were looking at AI at a reasonable price. If you wanted to play AI kind of related stocks at a reasonable price, and Magna showed up kind of on that list, maybe as a beneficiary or how it can kind of put it into practice. Um, do you ever think about AI and the relationship to Magna? No, I, I, I don't. <laughs> I think they have an interesting um, ADAS play, though, right? They bought Vionier. Uh, it looks like a great asset. I saw them at CES. I saw what they're doing. But this is more, I think, on the hardware side. They're trying to adapt some software, though. Magna is a traditional supplier, a great body and structure business. ADAS is you know, building those capabilities. But... This is still, to me, a, a you know a legacy core, great supplier uh, in in the autos ecosystem. 